Hello folks, Florentine Santif here. Welcome to this new series, The 3 Months Challenge. New account, 3 months, no money. Let's see how big our kingdom can get and it's time for the first week recap. Alright, so challenge has started on March 31st, as soon as the 1337 Elite server went live, and we're already in the tutorial. I got all soldiers answers, wow that was lucky. Yeah, lucky for sure. Or maybe. I prepared for that? Don't worry though, in the end it won't make much of a difference as those soldiers will be eaten up in 10 seconds on campaign. While the tutorial is happening, let me quickly explain what this series is about. Every week, you will be able to follow my progression through a new server where I'm not allowed to spend real money, and see how we fare against other players who do spend big bucks. Hopefully you will learn a few things while watching this series and don't hesitate to ask questions on the comments section, or to press the like button if you enjoyed it. Thanks for your feedback. Alright, so let's see what we get to work with on this first week as far as challenges and events are concerned. We have a progress campaign and a raise kingdom power challenges that last for 7 days, with no progress rewards but with grails as final rewards for rankings. Sweet! We also have a bunch of limited time quests, which hopefully will help us getting more resources to build faster. We're granted with a 7 days coronation event, rewarding Ivanhoe if you finish top 100 on rankings. As much as I say that you should not summon too many heroes, I don't think we can skip him there, as we would have to sacrifice all the stuff this event is going to grant us for a week. What's more, we would eventually get him on recruitment cards or something, because Ivanhoe is pretty sticky and you can't avoid him forever. I miscalculated my gem spending here and you can very well finish the event with enough points to buy either a Grail, an Excalibur or even a Brunhilde token, but I did not plan this enough so we will end up with nothing. Oh well. And finally, we have a Path of Wealth event, also lasting for 7 days, which is way longer than usual. As such, I'm really hoping I can reach some good rewards if I complete enough laps. I am pretty confident I can get at least 5 laps, and this would give me 6 famed hero tokens, which is pretty good. And I really want to complete 7 as the reward is a Brunhilde token here. One problem though, this event is RNG based, and everybody oh, knows that if the bad portal has decided to screw you, there is little you can do. Will we be able to complete lap 7 nonetheless? Answer at the oh, end of the video. Man. No, don't skip to the end. As far as maiden events go, no romantic hunt for us. We will have to play with the old fashioned heart stealer and attracting maidens events, but this is of very little importance. We also have the build kingdom benefit for a month, and the dream here would be to reach level 13 for a Brunhilde token. But I guess I'll be happy with level 10 as it would mean 10 grails in total. I basically spent my first week focusing on two things, one of them being progressing through the main quest as much as I could. Rewards you get are very good and provide a nice boost in resources. You also want to plan ahead for future roadblocks that paid visit to maidens and have children can be, so if you haven't checked it yet, consider watching my things you should know video for new players, I explain it all in detail. Know that I applied what I advised there and visited maidens a couple of times every time I unlocked a new one. I also used a trick to avoid being blocked by purveyance, taxation and conscription quests too early. These quests ask you to collect levies a certain amount of time. But you see, your levy timer is based on your total fortune attributes. For every 10k, this timer goes up a minute. So as long as you stay under 10k, you can collect every minute. That's why I spent the first few hours under 10k fortune on purpose, to get ahead of it. I didn't abuse it though, I probably only did that for 2 hours max. The other thing I focused on was the 140 points daily chest reward. This chest is of utmost importance and should be collected every day, as it rewards 200 gems. This is as much as having an active title, so work on a daily routine to be sure you score these 140 points. I managed to get it even on day 1 and you can see on screen which objectives I used. Now let's see our hero building plan. For the first week, I worked on 4 main heroes, one of each type. Bertrand for military, Marcelo for fortune, Ulrich for provision and Scarlet for inspiration. 
I didn't release Ulrich right away though, so I used Rollo as a filler at the beginning. I chose those four because they all have a maiden that you can unlock early, and they all have a 5 stars quality skill to work on. Scarlet is especially good early game because he even has a 6 stars skill, and you can get his tokens on Alliance Shop every day to enhance him very fast. All manuscripts were used on these heroes, by batches like advised in the thing you should know video. I also dumped all tomes on them, and gave every random tomes to Sir Oliver because why not? I didn't skip any hero, including Merlin. You will need him for Kingdom Expeditions later, because some fights will ask for 5 all-around heroes, which will be a pain in the ass as a VIP zero. You can get Merlin tokens to enhance him on the Alliance shop alongside Scarlet once, so skipping him was not something that crossed my mind, and something I would not recommend. I also have a clear plan for Round Table and Legendary Heroes. I unlocked Percival as fast as I could, on Day 5. This is the only Round Table hero I will unlock for now. He is the only one with a Fortune 4 stars quality skill, meaning that as soon as I summoned him, I started feeding him all military and fortune manuscripts, alongside all military, fortune and random tomes. The goal here is to enhance him super fast to get a huge 600k bonus attributes, and then use all grails to build his paragons for the 50% all attributes bonus. In the meantime, I will collect Excaliburs when possible, because I want to unlock all legendary heroes. First one will be Roland as he has a 6 stars military skill, but this is a long way down the road. Indeed, every famed hero token will be converted to grails to make Percival stronger, he is my top priority. I obviously tried to push the campaign, especially at the beginning, because I wanted to complete chapter 31 and unlock the Alliance Fragment mission on Castle 4. But I still played with caution here, attacking only when the loss on battle is low, and stopping as soon as it gets medium. You don't want to lose more soldiers than necessary, so when it says medium, just wait a bit to collect more soldiers and come back later. Campaign is tied with Kingdom Expedition map, and you should set it up nicely from the beginning to get more resources out of it. Assign a hero with the correct type on each castle, and level your maiden's intimacy and charm to meet their requirements. Fulfilling them allows you to collect faster. Don't bother leveling castles for now, this will come later. And be sure to raise enough kids to have a whole team ready to go on missions, because you want to send them as much as you can, at least for some of them with the best rewards. A quick word about the server and players who joined. We have a handful of veteran players that created an account alongside, and this is just great. We even have some of the most strongest players here. If you have played one event with global rankings combining every server, you probably know the name Moo Wolfenstein as he is likely to be on top. Yes, that's right. Mu came on the server. For those who don't know him, he has a 100 billion kingdom power on his main account, and is one of the few VIP 12 of the game. We also have Reagan, a VIP 11 player from server 247 with a 22 billion kingdom power account, and many more like Jura and so on. Competition will be fierce, so don't expect me to beat those guys without being able to spend money. But that's fine, at least they will carry the server on cross-server events. We created our alliance, 3MC crew, led by Arian who was gentle enough to create it and save me 800 gems. We are a handful of Discord members that joined me after watching some videos, and we have now the exciting task of fighting against Mu and Regan alliance. What a thrill it will be. About gem management on week 1, Castle Siege does not open until day 8 so gems were scarce on this first week. I still managed to get enough to buy 4 extra training slots on training grounds and activate auto assign as well as 4 extra children chambers to get auto raise option. I spent a few as well on feasts and alliance contribution to claim daily rewards, and on coronation event to get some points and rewards. This is an okay start, to be honest, even though I wasn't able to convert those gems into something relevant on coronation. I will need better maths for next time. This is pretty much all I have to say for week 1. I tried to be active and connect as often as I could, even with my wife booking a last minute weekend to Disneyland on day 3 and 4. Nonetheless, I still managed to get honorable rankings in both challenges, hitting 9th and 11th place for 3 grails as a reward. On coronation event, I ended up making top 20, and our alliance won the alliance rankings for extra rewards. Mu and Reagan are no match for us. For now. Despite some bad portal drama, I still completed lap 7 on last day of Path of Wealth, to get the Brunhilde token. 1 collected, 59 to go. 
I also barely got the 4k weekly chest on Sunday for some hero famed fragments that came handy for summoning Percival on day 5. I reached quest 558 on main quest, only branching out of it on day 6. King's Men is my roadblock and I wanted to raise my fortune hero a little bit to gain more gold. As a result, my lineup counts 24 heroes, with Marcelo as the lone level 200 hero. 5 others are level 150, and the rest is 130 or 120. This is definitely fine and only one VIP 0 stands as ground for now, a player called JJ Moo. JJ, if you're watching this, congrats on the showing and nice start so far. As it shouldn't come as a surprise, Moo and Reagan stand on top of rankings, with Moo being VIP 5 from day 1. A quick peek at what we'll be working with on week 2, an intimacy challenge, a charm challenge, and a garden stroll event. Other things are VIP oriented, so at least we'll have time to discuss strategy. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching this video and it's not too late to join the fun on server 1337, so please come and say hello. Stay tuned next Tuesday for week 2 recap and until then, bye bye.